When it comes to SQL Monitor and bind variables, what really matters is the data type. If you get the data type wrong, you might get stuck in a bind. SQL monitoring. SQL monitoring is corrupting the bind variable display on this report. Can you help me work out why? That seemed a fairly aggressive position to take, but rest assured it's not. Well, well not almost. There are some intricacies when it comes to SQL monitoring and bind variables, which of course we will do with a demo. Let's create a table, a copy of DBA objects. I've added a couple of other columns as well, just to pick up some additional data types, which will become relevant shortly. Flush out my shared pool so there's nothing in the library cache. Let's do a very simple query with a numeric bind variable. Simply select, I'm using the monitor hint here, which says, even though it's not running for 10 seconds, I want you to do SQL monitoring anyway, because that way we don't have to wait 10 seconds or you don't have to wait 10 seconds. And I'm using the bind variable N1. I went and found the SQL ID for that query, which was select monitor count less than B1. That's the SQL ID, and this is what comes out. And this is the text version of SQL Monitor. I might stretch that window, see if it'll make it fit a bit. And one of the cool things with SQL Monitoring is it actually spits out the bind variables. Even though the query just has a bind variable in it like that, it found the bind variable and actually put it in the SQL Monitoring report. That's very cool. Flush out the shared pool. Let's try it now with a date. Same query, just this time I'm using a different column, the creator date, which is a date column and a bind variable of a date. I find the SQL ID for that. I pinned out my SQL Monitor report, and for a date, it gives me a perfectly formatted date as well. Let's flush out the shared pool. Let's do a varchar2, triple X here. Go get the SQL ID, pump that into SQL Monitor report, and fantastic. It's all looking just fantastic. What is this person talking about? There's no corruption here. The binary variables look fine. Okay, let's do a timestamp, one of the uh, newer data types. And when I say newer, I mean it came out in Oracle 9. So yes, it's it's only a decade old. There's my SQL ID. Let's do a SQL monitoring report on that SQL ID. And yes, there we have the timestamp there as well. Not so fast. Yes, we did grab the bind variable, but that doesn't look like a timestamp. In fact, it looks like just some hex. And this is where this question came from. The fact that when you use timestamps, SQL monitor report gets a little confused. So the question is, how can we dig into this? What is that? It's actually not too hard to actually digest. Even though SQL Monitor isn't gonna give us the output we want, a little bit of work on our part and we can get that information without too much effort. It's 22 characters long, which is really 11 hex pairs. And so I could actually split them out just using a little bit of you know, substring into our 11 rows of hex there. We can dig into these now to actually work out what the internal format of a timestamp is. It actually looks like this a timestamp. Byte number one is the century plus 100. We hate zeros in the database because zeros often mean end of file, end of field, etc. So we generally steer a clear of zeros. We add a 100 to the year. The month is always non zero. So just the byte three is the month and the day, the hour plus one, because the hour comes zero, the minute plus one. And the last four bytes are the nanoseconds of a timestamp. It's 11 bytes that actually makes up a timestamp. So the first thing I need to do is convert these numbers to decimal. Here's a sample timestamp that I took earlier today, so we can actually compare it to here. I convert that string to decimal, and it looks like this. And as you can see, it's 2021 March 18th. This is 1, 13, 13, so we add 1 to the 13 to get 14, so we don't want a 0. We add 1 to get 18, not 17, 49 from 48. And the last four bytes, the last four bytes as hex is the nanoseconds, four, five, six nanoseconds. So we can dig into that hex and quite easily turn it into the bits and pieces of a timestamp. So I've written a little function, which I'll put on my GitHub repo that simply takes that hex that comes in and does what you just saw there by simply padding it out, removing the hundreds, the excess hundreds, taking the ones away, et cetera getting the nanoseconds, and we have our facility. So this function I'll make available to you, you simply pass in the hex string that you get from your SQL Monitor report, 
and you'll get the actual real time stamp out so you can see what the bind variable is. So hopefully that will solve that problem. Uh, I will log a bug against SQL Monitor as well. So you we don't have to do that work forever. One final thing I add is what if we take a timestamp with a time zone? That's a different data type with extra information. I get the SQL ID, run it into my SQL Monitor report, and that's a bit sad. We don't get the bind variable captured at all. Now, that is not the fault of SQL Monitoring. SQL Monitoring actually digs into the catalog to find it. And if you look, four timestamps with time zones, it doesn't get caught in SQL bind capture, so we can't find it. It doesn't even get caught in the other XML element of B dollar SQL plan, where normally everything gets dumped. If we go hunting through here, there's nothing about that bind variable. SQL Monitor just drills into these views to actually find its information. So that's why it can't show it because it's not being captured. If you do want to capture the bind variable for a timestamp with a time zone, pretty much the only way you can do it is with a trace file. So there's my default trace file. I turn on session trace with binds equals true, run my query, disconnect so I can finish off the trace file. You will find of the 18th of March, scroll up a bit. That's where you'll find. <laughs> Somewhat uh, interestingly, the trace file not only found the bind variable, it actually nicely formatted for us as well. So it went and did the extra work for us. Unfortunately, as far as I know, the only way you'll find a bind variable for a SQL, for a timestamp with time zone is actually with SQL trace. When in doubt, a trace file is gonna show you all the binds. It's gonna be the definitive performance analysis tool. But other than that, SQL Monitor is actually gonna pick up all the binds. Timestamps are gonna be a little bit convoluted, but that function will be available to you from my GitHub repo. And timestamp with time zone, once again, I'll log on with that as well. <laughs>